loyalty, loyalty, it creates self-talk. You have to talk to yourself to remain loyal to God. You have to remind yourself of the importance to finish every instruction and finish every ability that God had given to you with the full energy, with the full release. It requires self-talk, loyalty. It produces self-talk. But loyalty also produces self-denial. You have to deny yourself to be loyal. Disloyalty is flesh-made. It's the concept of offense, it's the concept of wrong focus. Loyalty is also self-examination. You examine yourself of what's your weakness. You never dwell on a weakness. You dwell on your strength to demolish your weakness. Self-examination exposes what side of you is stagnant. Self-examination exposes what side of you is not studying. What part of your brain is not learning? What part of your mouth is not speaking correct words? What part of your company is not bringing a profit of God, a prophet, a P-R-O-F-I-T, an exchange of God to you. Loyalty produces self-examination. It produces self-examination. It causes you to look at yourself. Jonathan looked at himself and said, who am I? I'm loyalty to King David. Ruth looked at herself and said, who am I? I am loyalty to Naomi. Know that Ruth was in deep contemplation. Her husband just died. Her life is at a crossroads. And in her self-examination, she discovered loyalty. Loyalty is a different code of conduct. You act different when you're loyal. Loyalty is not found in every environment, nor is loyalty a slave to its desires. Loyalty is not guided by urges. An urge is often a map to deception. Loyalty purges urges. Loyalty purges urges. Loyalty purges urges. Loyalty is an impartation from God. Loyalty is an impartation from God. And when you continue, continuance protects the process of loyalty. Continuance, continuance protects the process of loyalty. By the way, I want to say this. Uh, I didn't think that, uh, well, I don't want to say that. Saints, do you know that we have reached over 1.7 million people in 21 hours? You understand? 20, 21 hours. We did some massive broadcasts yesterday, and me and uh me and Pastor Juan will be live tonight again. And I'm I'm gonna release the flow over to her. One, possibly, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what's happening. We'll see what's happening. But loyalty produces deliverance from combative people. Loyalty produces deliverance from combative people. 
An argument can weaken your loyalty to a leader. An argument. Because an argument is a forceful impartation of one's opinion. <laughs> if I had a prophet Joshua Holmes in my generation, if I had a prophet Joshua Holmes in my generation, I would be on that man. I'm talking about spiritually. I'll be on him like white on rice. You ever said something so wise that you had to pat yourself on the back? You ever said something so good that you had to rewind the tape yourself? Hold on, let me rewind this. I need to rewind it so I can hear it myself. An argument is a forceful impartation of one's opinion. That's why King Jesus rarely argued. The Bible just said he did not many miracles. Well, he decided not to release his energy where people was going to release other energies there. He even told the disciples, if you go to a house and they argue with you, <laughs> he said, dust your feet off. If you think about it, he's even telling them if, if, if the house doesn't create your peace, meaning if they're not in agreement, don't release your energy. Loyalty is the ability to avoid argument. Loyalty is an anointing to control your eyes. Loyalty is an anointing to control your eyes. It's amazing to me because every single day the Spirit of God, He has a direction that He starts speaking to me in one vein, in a stream. It goes about for 30 minutes. For 30 minutes and then there's another stream. If you master a level of information, God gives you another level of information. You go to roles. Uh, you, you, no, let me say it like this. I hear the Holy Spirit saying it like this. You go from chairs to roles to auditoriums. No, to, oh, okay, I'm sorry, Lord. This way he said, you go from chairs to roles to sections to auditoriums is the stages of multiplication. When God told Adam, be fruitful and multiply, you notice that fruit is something that you do. The fruits of the spirit. Multiplication is not only financial and provisional, it's mental. So when you produce fruits, you automatically step into multiplication in your character. Multiplication happens in your mind. You multiply in wise thoughts. It multiplies in your mouth. You multiply in prophetic words. You multiply in emotions. You multiply in joy, in peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Then the Bible said, let the peace of God rule in your hearts and mind. Peace is something that you allow. I want to say decrees is something that you plow. Peace is something that you allow. Peace needs an entrance. So you become the magnet for peace. Peace needs an open door. You have to create favor for peace. You see now I'm on another bracket of another row another level of information. We go from loyalty, now we're dealing with peace. This is how God speaks to you. One thing that you'll experience when you're sowing into my ministry is that the Father will speak to your mind in patterns. You'll have a specific bracket of your life that he talks to you consecutively. While he's talking to you about it, you'll have depths about it. 
He'll speak to you constantly about one thing until you master the understanding of it. Debt is God continuing to explain a subject. Debt is God continuing to explain a subject. So when you deal with debt, it means that God is constantly feeding a certain food to you. He keeps it on the menu Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. He doesn't take it off the menu. And when you want to eat something different, he'll say, stay here. Debt is God feeding you the same food with different presentations. Debt is God feeding you the same food with different presentations. One of the anointings that's going to hit your life. If you're careful, if you're careful, you have to be careful to receive harvests when you sow. Because if you're careless, you'll forget that you're not just putting a seed in the ground but you're receiving a seed inside of you. The beauty of honor is that you and God are impregnating each other. You're giving him the seed, which is your life. He's giving you his seed, which is his life. The beauty of honor is that there's, there's a, a duplicate impregnation. Or oh, I don't want to even say duplicate because how God impregnates you is always bigger. You may give God one seed, God give you twins. One of the anointings that hits your life when you sow into my ministry is that your mind receives brilliance. Brilliance is, is the removal of clutter. Clutter produces the slavery to worry and stress. Scattered thinking increases your temptations. Scattered thinking produces scattered decisions. And without, without clarity in your mind, you'll become a slave and a victim in your choices. Another anointing that hits your mind is that you'll hear God giving you suggestions. A suggestion is not God giving you an instruction. A suggestion is God showing you the best decision. For a certain subject. A suggestion is God imparting to you a pattern of how you should view a certain season you're in. How you should look at an opportunity. Another anointing that hits your life when you're listening to me and you're connecting to me is the ability to finish a goal that you have made. Weeks ago, months ago, years ago. There's a quickening, a prophetic quickening to remember what you have said in the past. And to complete it. For some people it's to gain five pounds, for some people it's to lose five pounds. You don't ever want to set a big margin and say, I want to lose 40 pounds because 40 pounds means that you're going to have to... Uh, You're going to have to run in your sleep. In order to be a dominator, you have to have successes that are immediate. That are easily accessible. Domination is victory in remembrance. You dominate by remembering victory. So dominion is the remembrance of triumph. Your memory is determining your dominion. A vain imagination is Satan's attempt to blind you of authority. All of your learning is creating energy to dominate. Divine information is God eliminating your desire to be flawed. A flaw is the deception of your original image. A flaw is the deception for your original image.
Perfection is where you backslide into Genesis before the fall. All right, Selah.